Welcome back. In this video, we're going to extend our conversation about imaginary numbers to complex numbers. And actually, imaginary numbers are just a subset of complex numbers. In fact, complex numbers are the parent to our real number system. Okay? So, complex numbers are made up of both real numbers and imaginary numbers. So, a complex number follows the format of A plus BI, where A is the real portion and BI is the imaginary portion. So, our real numbers, as it turns out, the imaginary part is equal to zero. So if we had the real number 12, well, as a complex number, 12 is really 12 plus zero times i. Well, what's zero i but zero? So it's 12 plus zero. So we don't show the imaginary portion when we talk, when we deal in real numbers. And same with imaginary numbers. In our recent discussion on imaginary numbers, something like the square root of negative 25, which is 5i. Now, in an imaginary number, the real part is 0. So 5i can also be written as 0 plus 5i. The real part is 0, and the imaginary part is 5i. So we haven't seen this just because we don't show it. We don't, we don't deal with the imaginary part of the number uh, when we're working with just real numbers. And when we're working with just imaginary numbers, we don't worry about the real part. But with complex numbers, then we have to show both. We show both the real part and the imaginary part. And we always use the format with the real part to the left of the imaginary part. So, let's take a look. In this video, we're also going to add and subtract complex numbers. So, when we add and subtract complex numbers, we split it really into two parts. We add or subtract the real portions, that is going to make up the A, or the real part, and then we add and subtract the imaginary portions. And then we figure out what that is, and then we add them together. Or we just leave them in the format, really, 12 plus whatever i, or however that works. But it's going to be in the format of a plus bi. Now, that doesn't mean we can't have a minus bi. That's fine as well. We're also going to multiply complex numbers. And we do that by using FOIL. Okay, Just make sure we distribute everything you know, correctly through the process, and FOILs are mnemonic to help us do that. Watch out for conjugates, okay, or watch out for those difference of two squares. Okay, that is going to come up quite a bit here with complex numbers, and something interesting and easy happens there. And we're also going to divide complex numbers. So when we divide complex numbers, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Okay, so that denominator is going to automatically become a real number. And then we'll multiply the numerator, we'll FOIL or do whatever or distribute what needs to be done there. And then we might factor, if possible, and simplify. So we may revisit those instructions. So let's take a look at some samples. Okay, so remember the format for complex numbers is A plus BI with a being the real part and b times i being the imaginary part. Of course, i is that square root of negative 1. So, if we add negative 1 minus 8i and 9 minus 3i, negative 1 minus 8i plus 9 minus 3i, well, right, negative 1 is real, and this is our imaginary part, and this is our real part, and our imaginary. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our real portions. So we'll take our two reals 
and we'll add them together. Real plus real. So negative 1 plus 9, which is 8. So that's our real portion. And then we need our two imaginary portions. So we're going to add imaginary plus imaginary. So we get negative i, 8i, minus 3i, which is a negative 11i. So our final answer here, our real parts we've added those, our imaginary parts we've added those. So following the format a plus bi, or minus in this case, our final answer becomes 8 minus 11i. Our new real part and our new imaginary part. Now when we subtract, we do the same thing. Subtraction is adding the opposite. So we'll take our real parts and we will subtract those. Okay? And of course this is fraught with peril, right? Our real parts are negative 1 minus 4 or negative 5 and our imaginary parts are 2i minus i or i. So our final answer here is negative 5 plus i. I'm going to leave sample B for you to do on your own. And remember that minus sign is fraught with peril. We're going to have to imply it, apply it to that 3i when you add your imaginary portions. Let's take a look at some multiplication. Multiplica multiplication is a little bit more interesting, but we will use some of the skills we've used before. So we want to multiply by every term inside the parentheses. We're just using the distributive property. So 6 times, 6i times 4 would be 24i. And 6i times 3i, well that is 6 times 3 is 18. So that is 18 and i times i is i squared. But recall that i squared equals negative 1. That is super important for us. Recall that i squared is negative 1. Which makes this then 24i plus 18 times negative 1 which is a negative 18 that makes our final answer real, or our real portion is negative 18 plus 24i is our final answer. So let's take a look at sample problem B. A little bit of foiling here. I will try and use multicolor. So we're going to multiply 6 times 2 and get 12. And we're going to multiply 6 times 4i and we get 24i and we'll multiply 4i times 2 and that's a negative 8i and we'll go ahead and multiply 4i negative 4i times positive 4i so that is a negative 16i squared well i squared is negative 1 so negative 16 times negative 1 becomes a plain old positive 16. So that becomes a real number. We would combine that with the 12. So our real part here becomes the 12 plus our 16. And our imaginary parts are the 24i and the negative 8i, which is 16i. So we get 16 plus 12 is 28 plus 16i. And that is our final foiled out 
answer. Because you get more proficient at this and do a few of these, you know, you're not going to show all this particular work. You're going to know I squared is negative 1, and you're going to change that negative sign to a positive right away, and simply add your real parts and add your imaginary parts, and you'll be done. Now let's take a look at problem C. 3 plus 7i times 3 minus 7i. Well, you might recognize this. This is our difference of two squares patterns. Okay, or, as we have talked about, these are conjugates. So this is going to follow the pattern of a difference of two squares. So it's really going to be 3 squared minus, and I'll even put the 3 in parentheses, minus 7i squared. That's a squared minus b squared. So 9 minus 49i squared. And hopefully we know by now that i squared is negative 1, so that becomes 9 minus 49 times negative 1, which becomes 9 plus 49, which is 58. Now let's do some division. So we are going to divide 6 plus 2i by 4 minus 3i. And our instructions are to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So my conjugate of my denominator is 4 plus 3i. So I multiply both top and bottom by 4 plus 3i. Because what's 4 plus 3i over 4 plus 3i? Yes, it's 1. So we are not changing our location on the number line. So we'll have to FOIL the numerator. And the denominator, well, we can use our skills or our difference of two squares that we just saw in the last multiplication problem. And our denominator is really 4 squared minus 3i quantity squared. So our denominator is 16 minus 9i squared, which really is 16 plus 9, or our denominator is going to be 25. So I've simplified the denominator. Now I need to simplify the numerator. So, or multiply the numerator. So, 6 times 4 is 24, um, plus 8i, plus 18i is plus 26i, and then 3i times 2i is 6i squared. Okay, well, 6i squared if you've been paying attention, that's 6 times negative 1, so that's, this really is negative 6. So 24 minus 6, we've got 18 plus 26i. So our final answer, 18 plus 26i over 25. But I'm going to split this. Now we have a common denominator of 25, so I'm going to split it into my real part. 18 over 25 plus 26i over 25. So really my best formatted final answer is written as two separate fractions with the real part and its imaginary part. So our imaginary part is 26i over 25. Our real part is 18 over 25. And below is a summary of the complex number system. I would suggest you pause the video and write this flowchart down. Remember our complex number system is our parent. Its numbers are written in the format a plus bi where A and B are real numbers, and of course I is our imaginary number. And imaginary numbers, square root, of square root of negative 1, and only square roots, not cube roots or fourth roots or anything else, only square roots. 
and that's i. And our real numbers are a plus bi, but if b is 0, we only see the a. And then real numbers, we split those into rational numbers and irrational numbers. Rational number is just a quotient of two integers. And our irrationals are non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. Numbers like pi, the square root of 2, etc. Okay, and there are an infinite number of irrational numbers. And our rational numbers, there's also an infinite number of rational numbers, but they get divided into integers and then non-integers. So these are your, your fractions that you think of. Um, so there is a summary uh, again of some vocabulary and the number system and while we spent most of our math career working with real numbers, real numbers are just a subset of what's new to you now is the complex number system. So I hope you found that interesting and we will see you in class.